to go down the line towards Rivers, but Neville cuts it out. It's back with Hutchinson now, though. Finds Hobson. Hobson with a big switch of play towards Robbie Dale, and Robbie Dale can take it down in stride. He's on the left-hand side. He's got two for company. Goes there, Jerry Watson. Watson's got his left foot. Has a shot. Watson is in! What a goal by Ian Watson! 25 yards out. He hits a blinding left-footed effort into the top left-hand corner. And it's Blind Spartans 2, Stanley Bridge Selleck 1. And gone live. Rivers has the ball now on the edge area. He's going to roll out to Hobson. Hobson's in the penalty area down the right side. Cross goes. Maguire, Maguire taps it in. It's 2-0 to Blind Spartans. Hobson got him down the right. He got a little bit of space. Rolled in a low cross. It was deflected, it looked like. But Maguire managed to get it under his feet two yards out and just tap the ball home. It is 2-0 to Blind Spartans. Encouraging and encouraging just the way we came back from that goal behind. They could have, after after dominating the opening proceedings, they could have that goal could have knocked the confidence without a score in so far this season. Two two nil defeats, but they came back and scored within three minutes. Ryan Hutchinson, the man he expect to score, obviously the first goal of the season, uh, pops up in the area. He started the move, played it down the right hand side. Dan Maguire whips the ball in, and Hutchinson doesn't miss uh, from six yards out in the bottom left hand corner. And then it's been all blithe again until the last few minutes. And Dan Maguire, edge of the area, outside of his right foot, as I say, outside the right foot. You thought it hit, he toe poked it. No, it was outside the right foot, curls it into the top left-hand corner with some venom to give a, a 2-1 lead. And there's been a few other chances as well. The, the visitors arguably should be 2-2 as Rhys Dice broke in, but Peter Sa- Jameson made a fine save at his feet. But it's 2-1 to Blythe with 45 minutes to go, and that's all that matters. As Scott has Rivers for company. Rivers does well, gets the ball and can run away with it now. He's got Hobson to his right. He's got Wrighton in behind him. Wrighton's got a run on the friendly. He's one-on-one with the keeper. Wrighton! Off the post and in! Wrighton makes it 1-1 for Blythe Spartans. A great run by Joe Rivers. He had Dale Hobson on the right on the overlap and he chose that. He didn't. He, he made the run to Wrighton and when Wrighton got that run on the defender, no one was stopping it. Pin perfect positioning. In off the right hand upright makes it 1 1. Hobson is over this one. 25 yards from goal, possibly 30. Right of centre. It's more of a crossing area than a shooting area. And Hobson will try and whip this ball in towards the edge of the six yard box on the left hand side. Hobson steps up, floats the ball in. It's gone to the feet of Buddle. Buddle tries to let off to Dale. Dale in the penalty area, left hand side, goes down line side, his ball whipped in, header cross goes in! It is Sean Reed! Heads home for Spartans to take the lead! Yeah, I think he will. The, the, the three chances really. R- Rutherford had a, the, the first chance of the game where he ran towards goal, picked it up on the left hand side, advanced, advanced towards the middle of the pitch, and took a shot for about 30 yards. It was rolling towards the bottom le- left hand corner of Jocelyn's net, but he got a right hand palm to it and pushed it away. And then at the other end, as you say, Jarrett Rivers kind of shoulder barged the number nine Liam Dickinson in the penalty area. And on another day or any day, you'd expect that to be a given as penalty because it was a, a hefty challenge that got nowhere near the ball. And then a couple of minutes later, the shot from Con- Hughes, who again came in from the left-hand side, got on his right foot, central to goal, and, and hit it back across himself into the blind corner, should we say, and it hit the left-hand upright and, and went away, and that's really all that's happened in this first half. Boys. Uh, the scores, uh, Bradford Park Avenue 1, Salford 2, Salford had a man sent off but uh, we believe the goalkeeper was sent off for urinating behind the goal uh, on that one, we're not quite sure, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, Alfred and 1, Harrogate 2, uh, Harrogate had a man sent off as well in that one, Blythe Spartans 3, Darlington 1, Boston 2, Brackley 3, Gainsborough 1, Curzon 0, Leamington 3, North Ferriby 0, Spennymore 1, Chorley 0, Stockport 1, Kidderminster 2, the late late goal from Kidderminster, that one's still going according to this, uh, Telford 1, Southport 1, FC United Manchester 2, Nuneaton 1 and York City came from two goals back to lose 3-2 in the end, they were 2-0 down, got it to 2-2 and there was 3-2 to Tamworth, York also having a man sent off. Welcome to Friday Night Sport with Stu and Skins here on Coast 106.6 FM, online at coastradio.co.uk or on the TuneIn app 
you can find us on all of those this evening. So it's been a good week for some sides in our area. Well, actually, no, it hasn't. It's not been good for any of our sides other than Blythe Town, who have earned promotion to the Northern League, and we'll discuss that a bit later on. But Blythe Spartans had a big cup final, and the two lads opposite me are happy over there. They're smiling as their side came out. 4-3 winners at St. James's Park as North Shields beat Blythe Spartans with a last-minute Ryan Carr goal. So they are cheery tonight. Ashington, well, they didn't have the best results midweek, and it's two defeats in two, so we'll get their opinions ahead of a big derby game tomorrow. I say a big derby game. Morbeth haven't had the best of the last week as well. Three games, one win, a draw and a defeat, so not too bad for the high women. And Bedlinton played out a very, very thrilling 4 all draw with Mask United. And unfortunately, they're down and bottom of the table as well. So we'll discuss that with Andy Farrell later on and his future possibly at the club. If you want to get in touch, it's at Coast FM Sport on the Twitter or Coast FM Sport on the radio. Or you can ring us 01670 432107. Newcastle United new boy Remy Cabela says he's hoping to emulate the success of compatriots David Ginola and Lauren Robert on Tyneside. Attacking midfielder Cabela, who was part of France's World Cup squad, moved from Montpellier to Newcastle last night for an undisclosed fee. He has signed a six-year deal. Brazilian media are reporting Luis Felipe Scolari will not continue as Brazil manager. Scotland and England will meet in a friendly at Celtic Park on the 18th of November, exactly two months after the independence referendum for Scotland. It's day two of Durham's county championship match with Warwickshire in Chesley Street, the visit has resumed a day on 256.45. BBC Newcastle's Martin Emerson has the latest. You can hear commentary of the match on the BBC Cricket website. England have added Lancashire spinner Simon Kerrigan to their 14-man squad for the second test against India starting at Lords on Thursday. On to sport now in cricket. Durham are taking on North Hunts in Chesterley Streets. It's their final 2020 fixture of the season. Stuart Dick has the latest. Durham are chasing 196 here and they're 149 for five with just three overs remaining. Callum McLeod has got 51 and John Hastings is making his way towards 50. He's in the 40s now, needing about 50 to win off 22 balls. It is Durham on 149 for five. And then, of course, the Super League. you got the Super League licence a few years ago and it was the first season this season. You've gone up against some of the likes of Manchester City in like, the cup competition and stuff. How has it felt to play teams like that, play players like Jill Scott, Jordan Nobbs, who've, who've come through the Sunderland system? Uh, yeah, you can, you can tell the difference of teams that are in the top leagues. Um, the training every day, they got a lot... The difference between us in that game against Man City was fitness. Um, so this is where we want to be next year. That's where we want to go for promotion, but... You can tell where Jordan and Jill and Steph out and everyone have come from to going full time football. It's helped them the, develop their career a hell of a lot. So I would like to be in that position as well. Have you had any calls from any uh, higher up Super League clubs? I know you, you've got a good thing going at Sunderland and you're on for promotion, but have the calls come from the likes of Arsenal, Manchester City? Um, no, I haven't had any calls as yet. I've spoken to some of the managers, but. They know that at the moment I'm doing well with Sunderland and maybe at the end of the season I might get a few calls, but we'll see where Sunderland end up. BBC Newcastle Stuart Dick spent the evening with a local trainer looking to make history by winning the William Hill Classic for the second year in a row. I'm Kelly McCarry. I'm the trainer of Pinpoint Maxi at the Sunderland Greyhound Stadium. I've always been brought up around greyhounds all my life. My dad, my grand has always had them. This is all I know, really. How's he gone so far this season? Because he did suffer a big injury last year. It was heartbreaking because we knew how good this dog was. Yes, he won this competition last year, but people still didn't know how good this greyhound was. And he's only been back on the track a few weeks. He's had a couple of trials in prep for this. We've put him in a trial stake. He won the trial stake and he's won both his rounds. And the dog seems to have come back better than what he was last year, which is just unbelievable. It's just a fairy tale. How will it feel for you watching the race? 
You do feel the pressure a little bit because obviously everybody seems to want this dog to win. It, it, it's a bit of a story and it does put a little bit more pressure on you. If this dog won tonight, then the Ruth will come off this track. Hi, I'm John Ivanduke from William Hill, building up to the big classic, the big final worth £25,000 to the winner. Pinpoint Maxi, the local favourite for Kelly Macari, should win the race, but as we all know in greyhound racing, doesn't always go to plan. Here we go, the hair's on its way, the big race is about to start. Firstly, commiserations on the big race, but he's had a good comeback from injury, so how do you think he did? I thought he ran well, it's just he didn't trap, and if you don't trap, you don't win, and that's what happened, and he was tucking in too sharp, and, you know, all credit to the winner. The dog's sound, and that's the main thing. <sighs> Kelly McCurry there, speaking to BBC Newcastle Stuart Dick and the dog, yes. Pinpoint Maxi finished fourth last night. Manchester-based Mile Height Alba was the winner.